seasons ago, the Wolverines won a national championship. But the sweet taste didn't last, as the defending champions stumbled badly out of the gate in 98. This year, the guns are reloaded. Two Michigan quarterbacks are ready for another title run. Saturday afternoon, Michigan hosts Notre Dame. Good afternoon and welcome everybody. With Dan Fouts, I'm Brett Musburger. Dan, let's get right to the controversy because Michigan has been complaining about the fact that Notre Dame altered its schedule, played Kansas last week. But is there a real advantage here for the Irish? Well, I think the advantage for the Irish is they got a lot more practice time. That's important for quarterback Jarius Jackson to feel more comfortable with his new offense of Kevin Rogers. But it's more important for his young offensive line. But you know, Ben, I think the advantage may be offset by a veteran Michigan team that's fired up by revenge. Now, Tom Brady will be the starting quarterback. We will see Drew Henson at some point. Was this a tough decision for a coach to make to start Brady here? Well, they got help with the decision. Brady had an outstanding year last year. He's a fifth-year senior, so he's paid his dues. His teammates really appreciate him, and this week they made him one of their captains. So Carr has made his decision, but he made it with an overwhelming endorsement of his football team. We talked about the weather and it is almost a certainty that the humidity and the heat will play a factor in this game down the stretch here at the big house. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame 1-0 on the season under coach Bob Davey. But remember that they've had some difficulty going on the road for their first game as they did a year ago when they were shot down up at East Lansing by Michigan State. But they do have that victory over Kansas under their belts. And here today, the Irish getting fired up in the tunnel before they pour onto the field at Michigan Stadium. Dan, you were in South Bend. What was the mood of the Irish? Well, I tell you what, Brett, Tony Fisher will start. That's a big plus for the Irish. He gives them the ability to break the big one. But this is an outstanding offense, one I'm kind of excited to see because of what they did, uh, Kevin Rogers and Syracuse did to Michigan last year. And finally, out of the tunnel, it's Michigan and Notre Dame, a classic coming up on ABC. Well, uh, I think we had great competition in camp. Both guys played uh, tremendously well, and uh, they both have an opportunity today. Brent, he's going to keep it under his hat until kickoff. Let you know a little secret, partner. He told me an hour and a half ago. I wouldn't have said it if he hadn't told me. So the Big Ten crew here officiating today, and the referee is David Vitvo. Davies Irish will take the ball in the opening series. Michigan will kick it off. And perhaps a bigger story for Michigan fans is the fact that Hayden Epstein has recovered almost miraculously from knee surgery on his kicking leg. He's number 25. He'll put the ball on the tee. He'll kick it off. And Coach Carr told me he would also handle the long kickoffs here today. Jeff Del or long field goal attempts I should say Jeff Del Verne will handle the short ones and Corey Sargent will start out as the Michigan punter and the reason I stress this is all of you know how important the kicking game has been throughout this series with Joey Gatherall and Tony Driver drivers number 25 back deep here for the Irish. Driven by the wind at his back. He drives it out of the end zone. And now Jarius Jackson will come out for his first play. 
what was your impression, Dan, of the young man in South Bend? You were with him for a time this week. Well, we talked quarterback to quarterback. I told him I'm not impressed by the fact that he threw only three interceptions in a ball game. Heck, I've thrown six in a ball game. So uh, he he knows he has to get over it. He says he's over it. He's anxious to get his hands on this offense and see if he can run it as effectively as Donovan McNabb did last year for Syracuse when Kevin Rogers was his offensive coordinator. Well, they open up. Tony Fisher, the sophomore, the 225-pound runner, set in the eye behind Joey Goodspeed. A play fake on first down, plenty of time, going deep, incomplete. So he bought time with that play fake off the top, and this is the offensive line, anchored by John Morandi. He is the veteran on this Chili's offensive lineup for the Fighting Irish. Young man we expect to see is over there on the right. He did not catch a pass. Holloway against Kansas. And of course we have seen Fisher, but Tony Driver will be used at running back also. Irish come back now with second down and 10. Check that. On the run, they come right back with Fisher. Against this defense by Michigan, I think Dan Fouts told you at the top of the broadcast, veteran group, Rob Renus, one of the three captains of the team. It is a base 3-4, a little bit small on the inside, but extremely active with Gold and Jones, 20 and 55. Keep an eye there. The key men, of course, are the corners, Howard 3 and Whitley 5. Tommy Hendricks, 41 and outstanding. Safety of Dahani Jones, much more comfortable on the inside, number 55, working alongside Gold. And a timeout is called early by the Irish as Jackson saw something he wanted to talk about with Bob Davey and the coaching staff. So we'll take a break. He used a timeout here because he wants to stay in third and two and see if they can pound out the first down here with Fisher. Great defense that time by Tommy Hendricks. The strong safety from Houston, Texas, comes flying and forces the Irish to punt. Hendricks was the number two tackler last year for the Wolverines. Watch this play. Number 41 from the right side. There he is showing up there. He's unblocked, and he drills Fisher for the loss. Marcus Knight back deep. Runs up on this punt. Remember, it's into the wind. And Marcus down at the 46-yard line. So now it is Tom Brady's turn. One of the uh, senior captains to bring the offense out on the field. He's not all that worried about the quarterback controversy. He told us yesterday, if he lets that consume his, his thoughts, he won't perform well. Anthony Thomas, the feature back for the Wolverines. Play fake. They, too, will throw the screen, though, and they use Shea, the fullback, down the near side and run out of bounds at the 46-yard line. So our Chili's Michigan offensive line looks this way, and it is a good one. Anchored by a young man who figures prominently in the All-American chase this year, Steve Hutchinson out of Florida, number 76, the left guard. But those fellas have played a lot. Marcus Knight, Sean Thompson, the new tight end this year, and David Terrell will also play defensive back. Brady, the quarterback. Shea was the receiver. As Wolverines open with the screen, come back with the A-train. Thomas moves the pile. First down, Michigan. Ronnie Nix, an inside linebacker, number 34, making the stop for the Irish. Let's take a look at that Notre Dame defense. No questions about their defensive line. Talented and deep. They're going 4-3. Grant Irons moves to a defensive end spot. Ronnie Nix just made that stop. And in the defensive backfield, strong at safeties with Cooper and Sanders. Questions on the corners. Harper and Jefferson, they'll be tested here today. The toss. The A-train runs left. Now 
down at the 36-yard line. Cooper making the stop. Well, Dan Fouts, let's take a look at a new wrinkle, the matchup this week here on ABC. Well, Brent, I like the Michigan offense because of the solid play at quarterback and the running of that man, the A-train. And on defense, I just think the Irish are too green on that offensive line. But early in the season, special teams with one game under their belt, I give the edge to the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And Brent, I know you've called a lot of big games. What about those intangibles? Give that also to the Irish, my friend. Uh, I think a game under your belt lets you take a look at some freshmen iron out some wrinkles for the same reason you like the special team. Brady back. Fires complete to Marquise Walker, who is drilled, but not until he reached the first down marker. A very well-thrown ball. Dever and Harper with coverage over there at the corner for the Irish. Lloyd Carr wants to have a balanced offense this year, and his idea, and Michigan's idea of a balanced offense, is to have the same amount of rushing yards as the same amount of passing yards. Brady's off to a good start now, two for two. And this is heads up by Walker getting just enough for the first down. Aaron Shea operating a bit as an H-back. Thomas set behind Brady, first and ten. Thomas behind Shea, who cut into the middle as the lead blocker. And Anthony Weaver making the stop. And how about our Dell game solutions here, Dan? Well, the coaches say they want to score over 28 points. They averaged 27 last year. No turnovers. That killed them last year in their game against Notre Dame. As far as Notre Dame's defense is concerned, they want to make Michigan drive the entire length of the field and not give up big plays. A big play is a 15-yard run and a 20-yard pass. Second and nine, Wolverines. the blitz Brady trying to pick up somebody and he throws it over the head of Terrell and out of bounds the Irish came late from the linebacking spot on the right side to try and get a numbers advantage on the Michigan offensive line that time and Brady really showed his experience there that was just a three step drop and you see a lot of young quarterbacks in that case try to make too much out of it if your primary receiver's not there so what he did he saw that the first guy wasn't there and he just threw it away that's that's being a fifth year senior Anthony Denman, the linebacker, relays the signal in the defensive huddle for the Irish. They get set in that new look base 4-3 and now shift out of it and show blitz again. And they caused movement by the tight end that time. Sean Thompson picked up. So, you know, we have talked so much about the quarterback situation here at Michigan and the fact that we will see Drew Henson, but we had a chance to talk to Coach Carr yesterday, and we asked him what his thinking was all about when he did not name a starter until this morning. We've never had two guys here at the same time that um, are as close competitively as uh, Tom Brady and Drew Henson. And um, I wanted to try to settle it uh, either in the spring or in fall training camp. And, um, you know, I, don't, I think... Uh, it may have to be settled on the field with the performance. And score that one for Brady. He put it right on the numbers for David Terrell, the 6'3 sophomore, hitting with a perfect pass inside the 10 yard line. First down, Tom Brady, nice play. Tom told me yesterday he likes to throw this deep in route because it gives him an opportunity to show off his arm. The big body of Terrell shields Clifford Jefferson away from the ball. That is a definite advantage for Michigan today. They have big wide receivers going against small corners for Notre Dame. Anthony Thomas sets up seven yards deep. Searches daylight, cuts back, and down at the six-yard line. It'll be second down and goal for the Wolverines. He was really tempted to jump outside with that ball, wasn't he? But you can almost hear the coaches in the back of their minds, the uh, back of the A-Train's mind, and he can hear, cut it up field, cut it up field, get to that goal line. I think I read his lips. He said, run it right at him. Let's see, suck it down. This time, Brady caught by 
the fullback made a nice catch on the ball didn't gain anything in fact he probably lost a yard over there but Aaron Shea a one time tight end so it is not surprising to see him used as a receiver here early but strong safety a Johnny Sanders out of Houston. Well we got fellows from both these teams out of Houston Texas playing here today. And Brent, one of the advantages that Michigan has is they saw last week Notre Dame's corners, both Harper and Jefferson, get beat on fade patterns. And that's one of uh, Brady's favorite throws. Get the ball up in the air and let Marcus Knight or David Terrell run underneath it. Wolverine set up with two tight ends. Here's the Aikman searching outside and nothing doing. Field goal time as Ronnie Nix makes a fine play defensively for the Irish. It may not be field goal time though Brent I don't see any movement on the sideline for Michigan until they bring it in the big boys and here comes the field goal team late decision there for Lloyd Carr he was tempted I think. So again coach telling us that Jeff Del Verne would handle the short attempts he would use Epstein only on the long ones and the kickoffs the holder is the quarterback Tom Brady. After a first and goal inside the 10, good defense by the Irish. And Wolverine strike first. A 21 yard field goal by Jeff Delvern. And Michigan takes a 3 0 lead. But Notre Dame takes heart in the fact that it was first and goal inside the 10, and they did not give up the 7, they gave up the 3. Well, we had a chance to ask Irish coach Bob Davey what he was predicting. Remember, ever admit that maybe he shouldn't have kicked the 20 seconds high, Dan? Do you think Bo is going soft on us? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Epstein on the field to kick it off with the Wolverines on the board here first. In case you just joined us, it is a hot afternoon here in Ann Arbor. I'll be reaching the high 80s. There is a wind at Hayden's back as he kicks it off. And we were down on the field. It seemed to me like the wind might have a factor here, Dan. Not only the kicking, but perhaps even the passing game. You can relate to that with the wind. Well, that's why Michigan won the toss and elected to kick off. They wanted the wind at their back to start the game. Just add another negative factor for Jarius Jackson facing the defense and the wind. Coming out on the 20, folks. And now our Dell game solutions here for the other side. Well, the one thing that Notre Dame on offense wants to do is use a lot of different formations with the same personnel. That will create some mismatches. Now, as far as handling the zone blitzes of Michigan, Michigan excels at pressuring the quarterback. They had 37 sacks last year. Now on defense, Michigan knows they've got to contain Jarius Jackson and the option. Against Syracuse and Notre Dame last year, they got caught up with too many blockers, and then when they got off the blocks, they missed too many tackles. So the Irish have already switched back to junior Tony Driver, number 25, set up behind Goodspeed. Goodspeed, the fullback, bounces off a blocker and picks up a yard and about no more as Grady Brooks, one of the outside linebackers out of Dallas, closes in. Well, the real good battles will be right here. Tom Moran, John Morandi, rather, and Rob Renus. Renus wins this battle as he pushes the center right back to the fullback. Second down and eight. The Irish slotted receiver on the right. Jackson's three step drop fires back over to the left side and Jabari Holloway makes his first reception of the 99 season and it's good for a first down. The fella is so talented as a tight end that they will split him out as they did there and Jackson put the ball in his hands. This is no surprise to the Michigan defensive coaches. They felt that Holloway was held out of the action against Kansas as a receiver and that they would see him plenty here today. I think they like the fact that uh, at 6'4", 260, Holloway can operate as a wide receiver against a strong safety. Here's the option look. 
Jarius in trouble. Late pitch, dangerous, loose ball. Irish, I think. Yes, the Irish pounce on it, and it was a save, a dangerous pitch by Jarius Jackson. And Bobby Brown saves the day by pouncing on the loose football. Indecision on the part of Jackson here. Tommy Hendricks is flashing through right there. That caused the bad pitch. This is really heads up by Bobby Brown and a break for the Irish. That could have been disastrous early in the game to turn the ball over this deep in their own territory. Second down and 15 for the Irish. Jackson sprints to the left. Lobs one to Nelson. A beautiful catch for the first down. With 6.37 left in the first quarter, Michigan leads Notre Dame by a field goal. This is the second possession of the game for the Fighting Irish, and that catch by Nelson gets them another first down. But Brown, Bobby Brown, their split end, saved the day by recovering a loose pitch moments ago, and now the Irish coming out for their own 44-yard line. His driver spins off the first defender with Tommy Hendricks making another stop, and we check in with our man Jack Abreu. Jack. Well, Brent, you talked about Holloway being left out as a receiver in that Kansas game. That was by design by the new offensive coordinator for the Irish, Kevin Rogers. Rogers said he knew going into spring ball and to fall ball that Michigan would have a chance to look at their game tape. Terry Bowden talked about it at halftime. But what they did is they decided to keep 40% of their offensive game plan for the Michigan game and not show it before. Yeah, and Dan, we want to talk about Kevin here right after this snap because he plays a very big part of this game here today. Second down, shotgun, quarterback down short of the 50-yard line. Let's go back to Kevin because you and I were in here for game two when Kevin was the assistant head coach and offensive coordinator at Syracuse, and he brought Donovan McNabb in here. He brought Donovan McNabb in, and they jumped out to an early 17-0 lead here in the big house. And what that did is it took this huge crowd out of the game, and not only did the crowd never react or respond, uh, Michigan didn't either. But this is not to Syracuse. This is a new team, a new quarterback. Jarius Jackson is not Donovan McNabb, but he's not bad either. Third down and six. Plenty of time. Now Jackson Halls makes like Donovan McNabb. Didn't he that time? First down, Notre Dame saves the day. I remember one play when he ran out of his shoe here. I'm talking about Donovan McNabb turning the corner last year, Dan. This is just an outstanding play. And I think you'll see the difference between the two quarterbacks here. Donovan has the moves of Barry Sanders, whereas uh, Jarius Jackson, he's got more of the power of, say, an Earl Campbell type. So it's a good situation either way. The power that time for Jackson got the Irish the first down. Just inside the Michigan 45. Driver back in. Nelson's the motion receiver. Driver. Fumble. Michigan indicates they've got it. Let's wait for the official signal. There were a couple of big Irish paws battling to get it back down there on the bottom, but they do not. Michigan. Eric Wilson, the defensive end out of Monroe, Michigan, recovers the fumble. It's a big hit right there, too, by Josh Williams. They turned the ball over four times last week against Kansas. They can't afford to do that against Michigan. Time out. At Burger King, we're all and they were playing at Notre Dame. And this is Michigan at Michigan. Yeah, you can't make too many of those here as they just did stay in this ball game. Time remaining in the first. Wolverines with one field goal. Here comes the A train cutting back and downhill. Still battling all the way to the 25-yard line. He 
was an express that time. 31 yards for the A train. And really, a great decision making with when he cuts. He's going to make a couple of linebackers miss there, but watch these sharp cuts right here. And he just sheds defensive backs. Running downhill, the big A train, huh, Brent? This is what it looks like if you're a defensive back. And remember, he goes 225. Looks like a blur. Big fellow was the MVP against Arkansas in the Michigan Bowl victory last January 1st. Come right back with him. Big hole. Slants to the 14. And yesterday, we asked Brady about the importance of the Michigan running game in the A train. You got to set the tempo early, and that offensive line does that. And it's running the football um, on first down, and it's being successful, you know, moving the chains. And the only way you're going to be success successful as an offense is if you're running the ball. I mean, you look back at uh, national championship teams or uh, Super Bowl teams, and they're all teams that, that can run the football. The young man at the helm on the drive again, second down. I go back to reading Lloyd Carr's lips. Let's run it right at him. And they keep coming. That time. The Irish were ready, however. Well, Gary, ABC Sports coming. presentation of college football is brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. Chile is a proud sponsor of ABC College Football. Innovative computer solutions from the company that pioneered. Down and three for the Wolverines. Brady. Knight. Out of bounds. Pushed out of bounds. Well, that's a judgment call if he's carried out, but not in the college game. Fourth down and three. And the Wolverines face another fourth down decision here for Coach Carr. Now let's take a look at the end of the play, and you'll see this is a, a fine play by Harper. Although I don't think that Knight would have come down inbounds if he had caught the ball without the help of the defensive back. <laughs> Del Vern already with a 21 yarder. This from 35 yards out, and he's two for two. So Jeff Del Vern makes it six zip. Michigan over Notre Dame. One that that crowd will exceed it. And folks prying their way in here to watch this one. Epstein will get that wind at his back here again, although it may have tapered off. No, I can still see some of the flags swirling up there. This is how Epstein made his name, really, last year with his booming kickoffs. The fans just loved it, and so far today, he's put two out of the back of the end zone. Nice flag to show, eh? Penn State, 70 points. <laughs> the 50 lines, they are rolling. Can't believe Joe Paul would put 70 on anybody. <laughs> So he's three for three. You're exactly right. Oh, how coaches love to see a leg like that. Young man underwent knee surgery. Let's remind you that today's beautiful overhead shots, courtesy of the Goodyear blimp, Stars and Stripes, based down in Pompano Beach, Florida. At the controls, our captain's Larry Chambers. He's out of Lighthouse Point, Florida. You know, Brent, don't you think that both Schembechler is looking at Epstein and saying, mm, if I only had him to kick off to the run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there'd be no rocket. Be no rocket lore with that leg around. You got that right. Tony Fisher. As they continue to alternate at the tailback spot. Let's see what the Irish offense come up with. They were moving the ball good until they turned it over. Gonna go deep, got a man wide open, coverage mistake. Tony Fisher, the running back. Out of bounds as the Wolverines blow a coverage and turn the tail back loose. And now there's an additional face mask penalty. All you have to do is go back to the Syracuse game last year for Michigan and remember the fullback, Conrad, getting loose in the secondary. It was a shorter play for a touchdown, but a wide open back coming out of the backfield creates another big play for this offense of Kevin Rogers. Sneaking out from a wing back position there, 
And this is a coverage breakdown. There should be a safety over there. In fact, here comes one now. That's Tommy Hendricks to knock him out of bounds and to grab the face mask to give Notre Dame extra yardage. Larry Foote dashes on the field, replaces one of the linebackers for Michigan. Well, it's marked at the 28 yard line following the penalty of first and 10 here. And remember, they've experimented a lot with David Terrell as a corner. We may see him sooner rather than later. The Irish with another, actually, their best chance so far. They come back with the young man Fisher. He runs into Hendricks, who's been all over the place for the Wolverines so far. Well, Hendricks, uh, the way he plays, he's like having a fifth linebacker in there. He's a big physical guy at 216 pounds. He's experienced. He's a senior. And even if that wasn't his coverage responsibility, he knows that play's over. He's got to come up and make a big hit on the next play. Brown and Nelson are the wideouts. The Wolverines were soft on the corner. Coming with the blitz, Jarius gonna keep it. Jackson, first down, Notre Dame. He is a dangerous runner, and he's a little bit bigger than Donovan, I'll tell you. It takes a big hit to bring this man down. Well, when he scored on that 38 yarder last week against Kansas, he broke a tackle on a similar type of play here. He gets away from the initial rush and then uses that 235 pounds head first, first down. You know, I think Kevin may have told him to just pull it down and take off. Remember, he dumped those interceptions into the middle. We saw them in the tees. Nelson was covered up, it looked like. At that time, Jarius Jackson took off himself. The ball is on the 16 yard line. Fisher slashes to the nine yard line for Notre Dame. So a reminder that next Saturday, most of you will see the Fighting Irish again. And do they have a match against Purdue and Drew Brees? Brees, a leading Heisman Trophy candidate. And also on our regional coverage, some of you will see California, Nebraska, or Virginia Clemson next Saturday, 3 30 Eastern on ABC. Tommy Lopinski stops it at the fullback spot and Jay Johnson is the wide out to the right here. This is second down for Notre Dame. Good looking drive. Fisher slashes for the first down just inside the five yard line. This will be first and goal. Dahani Jones making the stop. Well Dahani Jones is 231 pounds and he's got to fight off the block of the fullback coming right at him there. That's Lipinski. That's a great play by Jones. He doesn't make that tackle. Fisher's in the end zone. So the time runs out on the first quarter. Bob Davies Irish, though, will be looking good when we start the second. We'll be back after this message and word from our ABC stations. Michigan kicks two field goals in the opening quarter, but now as we start the second quarter, Notre Dame with a first and goal from just inside the Wolverine five-yard line. So they load up with that full house look. Lopinski, good-looking youngster, is in at that fullback spot, and he dove to about the three-yard line, where it will be second down and goal for Notre Dame. You certainly get the feeling uh, that Notre Dame is not too worried about their bad start in the first quarter because Michigan only turned it into six-point lead. And as an offense, you know that six points is just one big play or two. We've seen the big play, the 47-yard pass to Fisher down the sidelines. And it's an offense of Kevin Rogers. He got exactly what he wanted. He got a running back on a linebacker, and that's a great mismatch. Victor Hobson, a freshman linebacker, checks in for Michigan. This is second and goal. Jackson keeps it on the option. Late pitch out of bounds. So it is third and goal. 
Boy, Jerry is dangerous on that late pitch a couple of times here today, Dan. All you have to do is look at all those helmets, uh, those beautiful Michigan helmets getting around that ball. They they stopped the fullback part of it. They forced Jarius to pitch, and because they're on the short side of the field. There is no penalty. Because they're on the short side of the field, there was no room for the last option of the triple option. You know, coming to the short side of the field, if you will, that time. They were over here on the left hash. Jackson did not have as much room as if they'd strung that out the other way. So let's see what they come up with here on third and goal. Tony Fisher is the tailback. He's in behind Lopinski. Oh, a beautiful call into Ron. And Joey Featherall walks into the end zone. A great call. And there's the man who sent it in. Great use of your personnel. Joey Gatherall is one of the fastest men on the Irish team. But I think that maybe Bob Davy could have walked this one in. You talk about fooling 11 Wolverines. The option, the threat of Darius Jackson going right to the wide side was just too much. Easy score for Notre Dame. Jimmy Sanson on for the extra point. Pounds it through, and Notre Dame leads for the first time today. And the reason why they were able to move down the field is this 47-yard mistake. A beautifully conceived play. A linebacker on the running back. The linebacker turns him loose. And Brooks is no match. 47 yards later, the Irish threaten, and they wind up with their first touchdown. Timeout. Win now at Sanson's back. The Wolverines, the organization, signed a two and a half million dollar contract. The crowd now recognizing the fact that Henson has come on the field. They'll go without a huddle, and now it is Brady who will be on the headphones upstairs. And Henson into the wind, fires first play of the game, and it very close to a first down at the 30 yard line. We'll see. And let's quickly go to New York now for an update. And here's John Saunders. It was first down, John. Brent, thanks a lot. Back to you in a moment. But first, your Burger King win your way update. Wisconsin and Murray State. Ron Dane, 15 yards and one of his three touchdowns today. 135 yards. He did not see any play in the second half. That's going to hurt him. He's going to catch Ricky Williams. Brent. All right, John. And here we've got Drew Henson putting it. The A train's belly. Five more yards for Michigan. And a Johnny Sanders, the strong safety for the Irish, makes the stop. Tom Brady had a good start. So he's got to be able to feel real good about his performance. But, uh, you know, Drew Henson comes off the bench. And first play, it's a pass play. And he threw an absolute strike. So his confidence has got to be way up there as well. the 36 yard line the A train Clifford Jefferson makes the stop and we had a chance to chat with Drew Henson yesterday and ask him how important is college football in your life here's what he said my biggest goal since I've been you know, younger was to be a college quarterback and right now I'm in the middle of that and after this year I only have two left and so I'm in no hurry to rush my life away and say so I want to go play baseball or even the NFL possibly down the line is not as big to me as being in Michigan right now. And here he is, his ambition, third and four, fires first down again. Two for two, he puts it in Terrell's hands that time for the Michigan first down. He's got a feeling that he and Terrell really uh, not only enjoy each other, they seem to be friends off the field, but uh, Terrell's smart enough to know that this is the future. And uh, he's only a sophomore, so he may be catching a lot of passes from Drew Henson. Drew Henson made his collegiate debut as a freshman in South Bend a year ago. Game was a bit out of the wood, and he drove the Wolverines 80 yards for a touchdown. He now has Walter Cross behind him. 
as the Wolverine running back play fake in trouble in the face downfield incomplete hit on the release intended for Marcus Knight throw was high and uh, I don't think Mr. Henson was ever sends the A train back into the game second down and ten on a draw Thomas for a couple of yards and time now for our Affleck trivia question so many great questions about this rivalry let's try on this one when it resumed back in 78 remember they called it off for a long time who were the starting quarterbacks for Michigan and Notre Dame in 78 a couple of fellows you all remember third down and eight if I get the answer right do I get a million dollars <laughs> <laughs> One of the all-time Irish fans reaches Philbin's down there. You can ask him. He'll have that answer for you. Third down. Henson pulling out, and they stop the play. There was a whistle. This is one of the uh, dangers of changing quarterbacks. They may say that there's no difference in the cadence, but in the heat of battle, there's always a difference. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, five-yard penalty. The down remains third. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, one of the things that Bob Davey was concerned about is the height discrepancy between his defensive second. That bounced a few off helmets. Third down, hits into the middle of the road, first down. You talk about a rifle arm. Here's a young man who was a pitcher way back when but said he did not want the stress and strain on his arm moved over to third base and folks that was a bullet of 25 yards well, you hear words like a sensation he's a phenom this is what they've seen in practice a rope of 25 yards right on the numbers to the receiver Knight doesn't even have to think about anything but how hard that ball's going to hit him in the chest remember he was hit on the release on his only incompletion so he is averaging 10 yards a pass. That's phenomenal. I'm Play fake there. again. Down the field. Got his tight end and overthrew him that time. Sean Thompson. But it was close, folks. Real close to being on the money. They may have the real thing waiting here at Michigan. That gives you an idea why Lloyd Carr was Oof. so reluctant to name Tom Brady as a starting quarterback. This kid is special. There's no question about it. He handles himself maturely, and I think his last summer where he spent time in the, the minor leagues uh, added to his maturity process. Pounded 13 home runs. The Yankees will tell you he's one of their best prospects in the minor league system right now. Here's the A-train. Simon through the middle. Irish bringing down at the 28-yard line. Deke Cooper, their fine free safety. 10-25 remaining here in the first half with Dan Fouts. I'm Brent Musburger. Michigan kicked two first half or first quarter field goals and gave up a touchdown early in the second, trailing by a point. Drew Henson quarterbacking the Wolverines here in the second quarter, and he has them on the move. This is a third and one play coming up. The other thing about Henson is he is a mobile quarterback. Handed it off that time, and why not? The A train didn't stop till he reached the 25 yard line, and another first down, Wolverine. The touchdown of Notre Dame, Dan, it was a thing of beauty. Well, they ran the option, they faked the option to the wide side, and Getherall from four yards out points his way into the end zone, but a well designed, well conceived play. You know, remember when I commented about the short side option just moments before that? You know, Kevin set that play up all the way. Absolutely. A great play caller sequences, and that's what he did. He said, you know, they'll think I become an option to the wide side. And of course, they, they flew so hard to the ball that time, together all walked on in. Play fake now, Henson. Here's the mobility on the move. Fires incomplete. Wisely threw that ball away that time, too. There was nothing going, and he was on the move. Yeah, you talk about the triple option. Well, maybe Notre Dame has a quad option now where they can use a speedster like Getherall on the reverse. There's your current drive under Henson. This is his opening drive here in the second quarter. And Lloyd Carr says he'll make his decision based on how they play in the game. 
cannot fault Brady, but Henson has shown us a rifle arm. And remember, he's going into the wind right now. Here is Anthony. Hounds to the 21 yard line. All carried by Anthony Thomas. Steve Hutchinson, one of the tri captains, is the left guard for Michigan, and he told us yesterday every offensive line should be lucky enough to have a running back like Anthony Thomas because he will take the smallest hole that the offensive line provides and he'll make something out of it. That great power and he really lowers his shoulders and his head and drives for that extra yard or two. Michigan not as deep at that tailback spot as they have been but they could be awfully good with the A train there. Third down. Hanson pulls it down. Short. Well short of the first down. Well defended that time by the Irish. Knight was trying to work his way free in the middle of the field, and they simply would not give up. Carlos Pierre Antoine out of Everett, Washington. Dennis Erickson's hometown. He made the stop. Remember the defensive coordinator for the Irish, Greg Madison. He's in his third year at Notre Dame. Spent five years here at Michigan. He knows what this rivalry is all about from both sides. So Jeff Del Verne attempting to regain the lead for Michigan 37 yard attempt Tom Brady the holder and he does just that three Del Verne field goals they regain the lead on Notre Dame 9-7 timeout it's in Ann Arbor Michigan hope you get a chance to visit here and uh, see a college football game if you're a big fan of the game this is a great university and a great study Notre Dame Michigan you can't go wrong with a road trip to either of those places I'll tell you that now we'll see how Epstein does into this little breeze here this time let's see if the uh, the Irish get a run back at it and together all who scored the touchdown back deep along with driver and some great games in this rivalry huh Talked about the rocket. Oh, what a leg. What a leg. Underwent surgery and still strong. But how about 1990, September 15th, Michigan and Notre Dame? Michigan was ranked one, Notre Dame four. Michigan led by 10 in the second. And then Rick Meyer went to work. His first start, the winning pass to Adrian Gerald with 140 left in the game. 28 24, the Irish. And that is so appropriate because last night Rick Meyer now playing with the New York Jets threw three touchdown passes for the Jets in relief of any test of verdict. Couldn't be happier for a young man. Well, maybe he won't have to add any more of those uh, team decals to his suitcase. Maybe he's found a home there with Bill Parcells of all people. First down and 10. Jarius Jackson brings the Irish up to the line. Tony Fisher caught that 47 yarder matched against the linebacker. He's the feature back for the Irish. Jerry is coming down the line, puts it in his hands on a beautiful option play, and Fisher does the rest. Out of bounds inside the 40 yard line. Dwayne Patman, the free safety. And leading the way on the outside was the tight end, Jabari Holloway. He split out wide against the corner, Todd Howard. And now, as they come down the line of scrimmage, there's no force by Michigan, and there's only one guy to option. On the outside, there's the block by Holloway. There's the speed of Fisher. Oh, I like this offense. It attacks the field width-wise and length-wise. There's the tight end moving up. So a 41-yarder and a 40-yarder for that young man right there. They come right back with him to the 37. And of course, next week on prime time, we've got a, a great split national for you next Saturday night. Ohio State on the rebound after that tough loss to Miami takes on UCLA in the Horseshoe in Columbus, Ohio. Or you will see Georgia Tech, Florida State. The Seminoles rank number one. And I'll tell you, Georgia Tech going to have a fine football team this year. Joey Hamilton there at the range. Those two games, good ones. Second down and seven. Option look in Jackson. 
Russell down at the 40 yard line. Foot and Hall. That's called making a defensive adjustment. Notre Dame came out with basically the same formation with Holloway split out wide. But uh, watch the adjustment that Jim Herman makes with this call. He's got somebody to take the pitch man and there's a couple of defensive backs outside that will close in on Jackson. Herman was concerned that uh, his team wouldn't be used to game speed. There's no way to simulate that in practice. Brown and Nelson the wide outs off to the left of Jack. And blown dead before the snap. Somebody along that offensive line flinched. Michigan man did jump first. And that's why we're having this discussion. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, five yard penalty, the down the main third. Jack Root. Brent, one of the concerns that defensive coordinator for Michigan, Jim Herman, had about his defense was the fact that they hadn't been tested under pressure. I asked him, when do you know whether your team is in the flow? He said, you know when you send them in there, you give them a package, and they execute perfectly. I think maybe that defense is now in the flow. Well, they face a third and 14 here, Jack. Split back look for the Irish. Fisher missed a block that time, and coming through is Larry Foote, the inside linebacker. Jackson did not have a chance as the running back fanned on the block, and Foote was all over Jackson. Yeah, great speed by Foote, number 17 from the right side here. There he comes, there's the dive by Fisher, and there's the sack with the quarterback. the Irish to punt it away. Joy Hildbold. The wind at his back and Marcus Knight back deep. Drives the ball. Marcus is going to let it go out of bounds. And it's going to be marked at the 12-yard line. So we'll take a break. Michigan leads Notre Dame on the strength of three field goals. Timeout. To the quarterback's left. Fumble the snap again. Loose ball on the ground at the 11 yard line. So that's the second snap problem. David Brandt, the center. Jumping on the ball and uh, the Aflac trivia question. Speaking of quarterbacks, when that rival resumed between these two schools in '78, who were the starters? Remember these two names: Joe Montana at Notre Dame, Rick Leach at Michigan. But how about this? It was Leach who came from behind that day and won 28 to 14. Now a yard loss for Young Henson. Second down at 11. In trouble and down he goes at the five-yard line. Hit by Lamont Bryant. The senior defensive end. The Irish very talented in that defensive line, and there was penetration that time. It's a really a nice stunt by Notre Dame along that defense line, anticipating the uh, pass play from Henson. They got exactly what they wanted. Watch the twist here between Weaver and Bryant. It doesn't get any better than that. It's the way the defensive coaches draw it up. And Shea couldn't close down. He was trying to help out blocking that time, too. Now, here's a huge play for Notre Dame if they can force Michigan to punch from their own end zone. Third and 16. And they got a shot. Oh, they're pounding with Sanders, their strong safety on the A train. And now it will be up to Corey Sargent, and he will be standing very close to that end line when he receives the snap here. This is a big moment for Notre Dame because they're going to get field position. He's into that breeze, remember. Left-footed punter. Gatherall standing at the 40. Gets it off. Hangs it high. Fair catch at the 41-yard line. An ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Impala by Chevrolet. Let's go for a drive. Right, and he'll come in motion. 
driver. Great fake. Kept it. Got him incomplete. Joey Getherall broke wide open. But what a fake because from up here, it looked like driver had pounded into the middle of the line. Jarius Jackson with a little magic that time. Good job by the secondary recognizing that uh, Getherall was going to be the receiver. Watch number 41 right here. He sees him now, and this forces the ball to be thrown down the middle and not out in front of Getherall. Second down and 10. Now it's driving. Inside the 35 yard line, and Hendricks again hanging on. Is Tommy Hendricks? One of the better looking safeties that we've seen in a long time, that late recognition. And a reminder coming up on Valvoline Halftime 99, John Sanders and Terry Bowden have scores and highlights coming to you from our New York studios. It's a good sign that Hendricks is making a, a lot of tackles. It's a bad sign that Hendricks is making a lot of tackles. Third down and two. Good speed, number 45, switches this penalty flag down. The linesman over here on the near side. Prior to the snap, they stopped it. Jackson made an audible there, shifted it at good speed to his right side and ran the option there. Held his down lineman too long in the same position. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five-yard penalty. The down remains third. Larry Foot dashes in again, and he replaces Eric Wilson. Gives him a little bit more mobility on the defensive side of the ball. Javen Hunter is split in now. Replaces Bobby Brown for the Irish. He and Nelson are the White House. Third down. And Jackson for a first down. Another good looking scramble by Jarius Jackson. He definitely feels more comfortable uh, pulling it down than looking for a second or third receiver. And why not? His strength really is in his running ability. Watch as he comes back here. The pass protection is excellent. He's got time to find somebody, but he also sees that big hole over the middle. And look at the shot he takes from Josh Williams. Didn't even phase him. Now they send Holloway, the tight end, wide to the left. Come back with the fullback and good speed. Pounds to the 26 with Eric Wilson bringing him down for the Wolverines. Now you may not think that that's much of a uh, gain for Notre Dame, but when you, you already talked about it, Brent, uh, this is a type of offense, the option offense, that you set plays up. And part of the option is to give the ball to the fullback. That keeps the defense honest. And that opens up the plays to the outside. Second and seven, and the Irish bringing down the closing minute five here at the half. Fake, Jackson fires, incomplete penalty flag, and the penalty has been called on Todd Howard, the corner. So an automatic first down. Final minute remaining here in the half, and this is a costly penalty. Pass interference, defense. It's a spot foul, automatic first down. Sometimes a cornerback can cover too closely. Howard has got great coverage on the outside here. And he's just a little over anxious. That was real close, but the official was right on the spot, had a, a view from it from the side, so he saw the contact before the ball got there. Ball is down at the Michigan 12 yard line, final minute of the half. Irish trail it by two, nine, seven. The blitz is picked up beautifully by the fullback. Oh, what a block. And now Jackson 
dances to the end zone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. But what a block by Joey Goodspeed, who picked off the linebacker and crushed him. Two weeks in a row now, Jarius Jackson has turned a disaster into a touchdown. Last week against Kansas, he broke a tackle in the backfield and scored. And with his help from his big fullback, he gets in the end zone again. Jimmy Sanson on for the extra point. <laughs> Folks, I want you to take a look at Joey Goodspeed. Now watch the Jones on the blitz has got the alley. Watch this. Stands him up. Now he holds the block. And Jarius cuts back. Jones has no chance. And Jackson simply does the rest. Notre Dame 14, Michigan 9. Timeout. Drives it. This one will come out of the 20-yard line. Let's check in in New York now with John and Terry. Brent, coming up on Valvoline Halftime 99, all the day's scores and highlights, plus Terry will take a look at the first half. This has been a close game like always, but Michigan's going to have to learn to stick it into the end zone. All right, it's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 99. Back to Brent. Yeah, John, I think Terry makes a very valid point there. Three field goals, and they had a chance, certainly. To pound in touchdowns, and they settle for three every time they threaten. On the other side, the Irish have put seven up there when they got the opportunity, and uh, that'll take its toll. Michigan with timeouts. Henson against the breeze. 51 seconds, trailing 14 9. They give him a four pack of wide receivers, but it's going to be up to this offensive line. They've had their hands full against this defensive front. They like to run to see if they can surprise them on first down. And Anthony Denman, inside linebacker, another one of the talented Texans on the field on both sides, makes a stop for the Irish. Picked up five yards on that run. Second down and five. Henson, shotgun look. Fired quickly and incomplete. It'll be third down and five. Curious that uh, Michigan, with three timeouts here at the end of the first half, did not use one there after the running play. Some time get off the clock there. Ron Israel in at safety for the Irish. He and Deke Cooper both playing too deep and deeper. Over the middle, incomplete. Overthrew Marcus Knight that time, and it was not a well-thrown ball. Now, if ever there was a time for a team to come after a punter, I would expect Notre Dame to go all out and try to block this punt. How many punts have we seen already in the college football year that have been just crucial? Sergeant James A. Beauty, Gatherall. Back to the 21-yard line and down at the 26-yard line. And the final seconds of this half will tick away. So Kevin Rogers, who came in here to the big house with Donovan McNabb and Syracuse, and now is the offensive coordinator at Notre Dame, brings a few option wrinkles into the big house with him tricks of the trade that they used up at Syracuse and so far it has been pretty successful against the Wolverines in Michigan's opening game and also the guy running the show Brent Jarius Jackson had some success running the option against Michigan in the opener last year at South Bend he could have walked in the second one, all effort. An ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Thomas, who has gained 85 yards and lost four for a net of 81, that has sparked the Wolverines to their three field goals. And Jarius Jackson, the Irish quarterback, has never. So 
So down below we see Henson putting the headset on which means that Brady will indeed be coming back. And you can just imagine what goes on in these two fine young players minds as they substitute back and forth. This will be coming out and we had a chance to ask Brady what's your attitude about this quarterback situation at Michigan. I mean, everyone looks at it as a controversy. I look at it as we got a very deep quarterback position. Um, you know, it's it's if you got two championship caliber quarterbacks, you're in a much better position than some of these other teams that we'll be facing. So, uh, you know, when Drew's in there, I'm gonna be rooting for him, and uh, when I'm in there, I'm sure he's gonna be rooting for me. So it's Drew's turn to root as Tom Brady, who was four of six for 37 yards, leads the Michigan offense out. And the big man for them, of course, is the A train, Anthony Thomas. Brady to put it up on first down. He's got to roll on a cutback. 45. Down at the 48 yard line as the DB slipped on the pass. Michigan opened the game on offense with the forward pass, and here they come out. First play of the second half, which is a great start, not only for Brady, but for this entire offense. It's a big play that Terrell is capable of making, and it gives him the ball out to midfield in one play from the 20. That's Lee Lafayette, who is over there on the corner, replacing Jefferson, who slipped that time, and it was a 28-yard gain. Now the A train's turn, and he crosses midfield. Now our Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, first half stats, Dan. Well, the rushing yards are huge for, for Notre Dame. They just feel, and they just look, uh, that they really feel good about themselves in, in operating this offense. I, I'm very impressed with Jarius Jackson and his ability to, to deal the ball on the option, and also, when everything breaks down, he can still make a big play by himself. Second down for Brady. And Shea, the fullback. Play fake. Thomas got a block. Good. Terrell's hands. First down, Michigan. We go down below now and check in with Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Brent, while Michigan's on the march, Kevin Rogers, the offensive coordinator, is very happy with the performance of the Irish offense. In fact, he hinted that his quote, I've got a few squiggles for the second half that'll get the Wolverines' attention. Now, Lloyd Carr, on the other hand, issued a challenge to his team. They seem to be meeting it right now. He said, we've got 30 minutes left. Or do you want a season like 1998? Can't squiggle if the other team's waggling. And right now, the Wolverines have got it down to the Irish 36-yard line. And the A-train pounds into big Grant Irons, the former linebacker whose brother Jared was a pretty good linebacker here at Michigan. And Grant, out of the woodlands down Houston way, comes up big. Notre Dame, Michigan. You know, sure, we're seeing a couple of passes every now and then, but what we're seeing when it really matters is just head knocking football there. Nice play, knifing in from his defensive end spot there by Irons. Let's see if they go back to work on that young corner for the Irish. Second down. Play fake, deep drop. Complete. And Marcus Knight, the senior wide receiver, drilled out of bounds, but not before he picks up another Michigan first down. The key question here, and Terry Bowden put his finger on it, can the Wolverines finish off a drive and not settle for a field goal? We shall see. Now this is where they bog down in the first half when they get down to the 20-yard line. I really like the timing between Brady and his two outside receivers on those last two out routes. Short drop, fired again, got Terrell inside the 15-yard line. Pick up for about seven yards that time, and Lee Lafayette is a young man who's going to see some work today. He's only 5'9", folks, and he's over there on the corner, and watch the taller man go up. Well, Lafayette's about 10 yards off the receiver. He's got to come up and tighten up a little bit. If he does that, watch for Michigan to try to throw the fade. Now with the A train and the safety Sanders hanging on as he pounds close to another Michigan first down. A lot of similarities in these two offenses when they run the ball 
That time it was the A train behind Aaron Shea. We've seen Notre Dame use their fullbacks, Good Speed and Lipinski, to lead Driver and Fisher. Need a yard here on third down. Carr doesn't want to have to make that field goal decision here. He wants this first down. Toss, A train. First down. Brent, they've now converted five of ten third down situations, none bigger than this one. Do you know at, at uh, halftime they were talking in the locker room about when we get the ball down there, we got to punch it in for a score. Well, this is the first step, converting on third and short. Senior co-captain Tom Brady brings the Wolverines up to the line just inside the ten. Penalty flag. A penalty has been called on Devlin Harper. From up here, it looked like he made a brilliant play, but he must have got some body early. Let's take a close look at this one. Well, it's a slant pattern to David Terrell. Here's Harper, number 10. I think his left hand is going to be good, but I think it's that right hand right there that pulls Terrell's right hand away from the ball. Check this out. Watch his right hand as he will grab the right hand and arm of David Terrell right there. It's a good call by the officials. Yep. Ball spotted. Just outside the Irish two-yard line. First and goal. Wouldn't you call on the eight right here, Mr. Fox? Absolutely. Get him in behind big Aaron Shea. Put Shea over there on the left wing. Let's see if they bring in the motion to the middle. Here they come. Behind Shea. Touchdown, Michigan. Three field goals. The Wolverines finally pounded in, and Tom Brady probably has set the quarterback the rest of this game. The way they looked here, huh? It was a perfect four for four on the drive, and the offense just ran more smoothly with him under center. Jeff Delvern nailed down the three field goals in the first half. Adds the extra point. Look here, coming right at you. Shea, the lead man. Anthony Thomas does the rest. And the Wolverines regain the lead, 16-14. Timeout. Dwayne Patman may have saved the touchdown. And here comes Jarius Jackson and his new offensive coordinator, Kevin Rogers, and he are clicking today. And Dan asked Jarius, what did Donovan McNabb tell you about Coach Rogers' offensive system at Syracuse? Now I had a chance to talk to him about the offense and how was it, you know, when he was running at Syracuse. And he just told me, hey, man, be in shape, you know, for the simple fact that Coach Rogers, he loves to send a quarterback on the option. The next play, he wants you to, your fakes to be great. Then he wants you to throw it downfield, you know, so you have to be ready for everything, Coach Rogers. Donovan told him, right, be in shape. Jarius has done a little bit of everything here today. Hands it off this time to Fisher. Makes his way to the 43-yard line, and Ian Gold, number 20, one of the inside linebackers, making the stop for the Wolverines. Jackson has been busy. Got nine rushes, thrown the ball five times. But the way he's handled himself and the way that uh, he's bounced back from those interceptions, the big thing on those interceptions is we've seen the first half is he doesn't like what he sees down the field. He's going to run with it. Here's second and seven for the Irish. Fisher outside, Hendricks in pursuit. Fumble! Michigan pounces on it. Tommy Hendricks is a little bit of everywhere that time. And Josh Williams pounces on the loose football. But how about the job that Hendricks is doing from that safety spot today? Fisher 
pressure to the outside. And there's his buddies knocking the ball loose. Looked like Ian Gold, number 20 there. And there's Williams with the recovery. And the Wolverines are in Irish territory. Tom Brady from the Notre Dame 42-yard line. Play fake. Going to go deep. Nice. First down inside the 25-yard line. Ty Streets is gone, but Marcus Knight is stepping up as the go-to man here this afternoon. And he's stepping up for his quarterback, Tom Brady. Love the call from Mike DeBoer, the coordinator, after the turnover. Look at this time to throw. He's got two receivers deep. That's a perfect strike between two defenders. Brady is hot. In the red zone again. Terrell split to the right. Knight's the slot man. This time it's Terrell on a wobbler. What? At the 15-yard line by Anthony Denman. So here at the Big House in Ann Arbor, Michigan leading Notre Dame 16-14 and driving again and a NCAA record, 111,000 plus here today. Second down and six for the Wolverines. A train got a block by Shea. Stood up right at the 10-yard line. In case you just snapped on your TV set, here's the last touchdown. Great lead brought by Shea. And the A-Train pounded it in, but it was the passing of Tom Brady. Four of four. For 67 of the 80 yards on the drive. And right now, Brady's uh, six for six here in the second half. Clifford Jefferson has returned at that right corner spot for the Irish. He'll take Terrell. Brady looks in that direction. Goes over the top. Knight in the air. Out. Not as big as Drew Henson, but he's got an arm, Dan. He does have a strong arm. Here it is, the corner route. But uh, Knight hurries this route just a little bit too much, and he doesn't give Brady enough room to work with with this throw. One yard too far. Harper had the coverage. Del Vern can see the distances of the three field goals he's been successful on. He can add a 27-yarder to that total, and I believe he slid it right. He misses. Three for three in the first half, misses his first in the second. So Notre Dame with a stop, and it's a big one. Time out. Where will you be when the millennium turns? Your dreams change. So have we. Now Dean Witter and Morgan Stanley have joined to provide a world of investment advice on a personal level. The world will change, but at Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, we will always measure success. One in order. Notre Dame with possession coming out. Their own 20-yard line, trailing by two points here after the missed Michigan field goal. Driver and Lopinski now in the Irish backfield. Jackson changes it up at the line. Lopinski. And they were wrestling to get the ball away from the big fellow. Jack Aroot. Brent, it is hot down here. We've talked about it. But look at the top of the Michigan Stadium there. That three tiers where you sit, well, it creates a giant shadow where the Michigan Wolverines stand on the sidelines. It is a good 15 degrees cooler there than when Notre Dame is right out in the blazing sun. When we get down to the waning moments of the third quarter and in the fourth quarter, when fatigue comes into play, that 15 degrees could all come into play as well. Sounds like the home field advantage to me, partner. Second down. Jackson checks the wristband where he has the plays. He's back in the shotgun. Plenty of time. Nice 
pitch to Catherall reached up right at that first down marker. So Jarius Jackson, a snapshot look at the Irish quarterback. 6'1", 235 from Tupelo, Mississippi. He's the only captain of the team this year, and he has cut down those interceptions here today, Dan, and that has been huge. And not only did he throw three interceptions last week, he made two tackles. But when you throw interceptions, you got to make tackles. And he went and made the tackle. He's yeah. a big, tough fella. He, uh, he, he delivers something when he makes those tackles, too. I don't believe it. He delivered something going in on that touchdown, too. First down and 10. Before the snap. Illegal, illegal movement. And you know what? Well, we've got a time. Let's go back. Dan mentioned what he did. Take a look at Jackson as a defensive player. Well, he throws this one to a defensive lineman, so that's really, really embarrassing. But he sticks his head right in there and brings this, brings down that big guy. Now this is a linebacker he's going to have to bring down. And watch the determination. He tries to rip the ball loose, but uh, he makes sure that uh, the guy doesn't get away. Now, now tell me the truth. Whenever you fired one in the NFL, did you go down and make the, make the stop like that now, Dan? In the NFL, the first thing that happens after you throw an interception is all those defensive linemen start looking you up. <laughs> and I'm like a gopher. I look for a hole in the grass and bury myself. <laughs> Believe me, I threw a lot of interceptions, too. <laughs> I'm going to bring that up. Man. First down in 15. Draw play it looked like all the way, but he just didn't make it look good enough, did he? From here, anyway, James Hall out of New Orleans, linebacker making the stop for the board. Right? You know what Jackson did on that play? He called an audible when he was running with the ball because Lipinski was coming over and he wanted it was a design draw play, but I don't think Jackson wanted to give it to his big fullback. He held on to it and told Lipinski, hey, just get in front of me and block. He heard us talking about those turnovers. He said, let's not risk another one right here. Second down and 14. The driver is slotted as a wide receiver. He's got a linebacker. There's a call by Hendricks. He audibles in the defense. Jackson in trouble. Fumble. Ball loose on the eight. And I'll tell you, Holloway went after it. Did they call him down? Before he coughed it up. That no, they, no, they didn't, Brent. Uh, they threw the beanbag in there to, to mark that it was a fumble. That was really outstanding hustle by Holloway to get on that ball, and he really took a shot. Good pressure by Michigan. Watch Larry Foot here, Dan. Yeah, there was a lot of indecision by Jackson here. Watch him in the pocket here. The pressure by Foot. And then the hit in the blind side. There goes the beanbag by the official. That lets you know that it isn't a fumble. He was right on top of that one, wasn't he? Here's third down and 27. And the Wolverines are storming defensively all of a sudden. It'll be tough to hear down there. High snap. Jackson pulls it down. Dancing down. Two-yard line. It was Hall and Linus, the nose man from Holland, Michigan, one of the three captains in on that stop. Now, if Notre Dame can't operate the option type of offense that they want to, and they're forced to throw, they're just not that good yet. High snap by Mirandi. That throws off Jackson's timing, and now there's just swarming, penetrating defense by the Wolverines. Came after the punt that time. Great Notre Dame bounce. Fielded on the hop at the 45-yard line by Knight. And it'll be first down at the 40. But it was the pressure defense. As the Wolverines now have a half game under their belt. And they're playing with just a little more certainty on defense. Timeout. And national car rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. Wolverines trying to go behind Tom Brady here again. Thomas has rushed for 99 yards today and 23 carries. Brady gets time, fires to Shea, slants first down, Michigan. So Tom Brady, the senior. 6'5", 213 out of San Mateo. Touchdown pass, 12 consecutive games. He's got a lot of Michigan records here. 
that little facial hair there, uh, Dad. <laughs> That's about what it looks like in person, too. He needs to work just a little bit harder from the old goatee. First down. Open man. Beautiful look back to Terrell for another first down and 12 well, more yards. We talked a lot about Drew Henson and his $2.5 million signing bonus from the Yankees. Well, number 10 for the Michigan Wolverines, Tom Brady. He was drafted by the Montreal Expos out of high school. The reason why he didn't take it was the fact was the fact that he wanted to play quarterback for the for the Michigan Wolverines. Drew Henson, on the other hand, decided to play for the Yankees. He played in Tampa. What did he do? He had 13 home runs. I understand this summer. That's McGuire type numbers in the minor league. That was nice going there, Jack. You did that real well, partner. Anthony. Slamming straight ahead. You know, you know folks, Anthony you know, sometimes Gary. you don't notice that Jack and Rudy is so good that uh, the one baseball of Brady didn't come up, so he just moves over there and takes care of that hits. And that was good going down there, huh, Jack? Well, you know, the uh, heat certainly doesn't seem to affect Jack and Rudy. you got to be quick on your feet down here, guys. <laughs> All right, we've got 346 to go in the third quarter. And Tom Brady, who started the game, worked the first quarter, and then it was Drew Henson the second quarter. And Brady brings the Wolverines up with Henson on the other end of the headphones, listening to play calls from up in the booth. The A train stumbling as he reaches the 10 yard line. So they'll need about a good four to five yards for a first down on this next play coming up here, Dan. If he doesn't stumble there, Brent, he might have scored. He saw a huge hole open up, and I think he just was uh, a little bit over anxious. And that, that really happens early in the season. And that's part of the conditioning. That's part of the uh, problem that uh, Lloyd Carr talked about when he felt that Notre Dame had an advantage. Right now, this is a veteran team led by a veteran quarterback. And they know the importance of getting in the end zone on this possession. So the spot left Michigan five yards shy here on third down. Brady to fire, slant, Terrell knocked away beautifully. Jefferson over there on that corner has come back in the game and he makes a big time play defensively for Notre Dame. Absolutely a big time play. Uh, Brady really didn't step into this throw as well as he should have. This is a great play cutting in front of the receiver Terrell. The ball kind of floats a little bit there that gave Jefferson the the time to make an outstanding play. Now a 28 yard attempt. Remember. Young man just missed a 26 yarder hit three in the first half got this one right down Broadway didn't he nailed it and that puts him on a five point margin right now Michigan 19 Notre Dame 14 of course next week we'll start the regular season in the National Football League Sunday night on ESPN and how good is it to say the Cleveland on that sack that time. And uh, really did a good job from that linebacking spot for the Wolverines. Happened to notice him. We haven't called his number too much today. But what's most impressive about the Michigan defense is the way that they are, well, they're just playing with more authority here in the uh, the second half. I think they were just a little tentative in the first half of this game against this option. But now they're, they're coming. They're winning first down. And, and when they win first down, that forces Notre Dame out of their rhythm offensively. It forces them to go back and throw the ball, something they really don't want to do. This one returnable. Gatherall. Slap at the 24 yard line. The first down for Jarius Jackson. And we'll see what kind of changes Kevin Rogers is going to make. He's lost a lot of yards getting sacked. Well, here's your first down play, Dan. And the uh, show option bad pitch. Wide receiver though picks it up and makes the most of it. David Gibbons reaches down for the loose ball and uh, Jarius just kind of pitches it wildly sometimes. And you can see he's saying, "Hey, that was my fault." Well, part of the problem was number 41 again, Tommy Hendricks. Watch from the right side of the screen. He's going to drill Jackson right in the chest here, and Jackson wasn't quite sure where the wide receiver Gibbons. Was that's a great play by Gibbons, the sophomore picking it up on a couple of bounces. Gain five yards on that broken play, makes second five of the Irish. Quick fire out 
right side. Getherall on the move for Notre Dame first down. Pays a price. Dwayne Patman unloads on him. Jackaroo. Well, Brent, we saw in the snapshot that Jarius Jackson comes from Tupelo, Mississippi. You'd think that he would be the hometown hero. When I asked it about him, he shook his head and said, nope, I'm not a hero in Tupelo. There's only one hero in Tupelo. His name, Elvis Presley. Still? Still. <laughs> He's still alive. What are you talking about? I saw him at the donut shop. <laughs> First down, 10 for the Irish. Look, there's a pitch. Fisher, 45, midfield, and finally wrestled down by Ian Gold, the linebacker. Penalty flag, however, is down, and there are two injured Wolverine players, including the cornerman Todd Howard and Hendricks, are both down with him. So these two injuries right here. Well, if you take Hendricks out of the game, you put in a redshirt freshman. Now, don't forget, David Terrell could always check in. He's got his helmet on. If they want to throw him in, remember, the coaches have used him. I'll let Charles Woodson here. He stays, got his helmet on. First of all, you're going to see a nice block by number six, David Givens. That gets Fisher into the secondary. You can watch but the now, two. Watch this block here. Here is Hendricks, and watch the collision as Hendricks and Howard run into each other. I, I really think that, uh, man, this is, he just came off him, didn't he, and uh, hit both men. And Howard is up. That's good news for the Wolverines, and now it appears that Hendricks is going to be able to get up. Behind Howard is a true freshman. If they don't go with Terrell, they have to go with Jeremy Lasseur. And a reminder that at the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make a contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. At beginning this year, Chevrolet will also make a donation to each player's high school. And uh, what a great gesture that is to include the high schools in this program. So David Terrell and Cato June, the freshman, do check in. This is the first appearance for Terrell on defense. He handled 47 snaps on offense. He's made seven catches today. He's lined up at corner. They back him off a little bit. On first down, let's see if the Irish go right after him. Gonna back the other way with the screen and the fullback, Joey Goodspeed, bobbles it. Had the fullback screen set up, and Goodspeed just couldn't get the handle on it. Well, he did the cardinal sin of all receivers that drop passes. They look downfield before they catch the ball. Simple as that. Took his eye off the ball and laid it on the turf. Todd Howard returns for the Wolverines. He's back on the field. So Terrell handled one snap over there at that corner, but it is still that freshman. Back at that safety spot. Here's second down, foot indicating blitz. Picked up by the fullback. Jackson dancing, firing, going deep. Nelson reaches up on Howard. Incomplete. No flag. Well, that's what Notre Dame should have done on the play before. Instead of throwing the screen, they should have tested David Terrell. They allowed Todd Howard to get back in the game. Jarius Jackson underthrows Rakai Nelson on that play, and it's an incomplete pass. They lost an opportunity there to go after a guy who really doesn't have a whole lot of experience playing corner in David Terrell. Here's your third and 15. Down. Put it in Javen Hunter's hands. A third and 15 for 22 yards and an Irish first down. Well, first of all, you're going to see great protection. Here's 
Javen on the outside, Javen Hunter, and the protection is so good it allows Hunter to get down in between the linebackers there. And a great throw, the best throw of the day by Jarius Jackson. And remember Tommy Hendricks shaken up. So Cato June is at free safety. They're going to the middle of the field as they did that time against the inexperienced player. Fisher with a pop for five yards to the 40. You know there's going to be great contact when these two teams get together. We're, we're seeing a lot of lead plays, isolation plays, if you will, where the uh, linebackers are forced to come up and make the hit. And I think that that time Ian Gold uh, got a big hit on Tony Fisher. But Fisher's bigger than Gold, and he got the extra yardage. Howard has been taken out again, and Terrell is in at corner. Matched against Bobby Brown. The corners back off for Michigan. Jackson goes against Whitley up high. No penalty flag down. Tony Fisher wanted it, and that time Grady Brooks got the best of him. Remember in the first half, Brooks turned him loose, and it was good for 41 yards. Notre Dame comes back with the play, and this time Brooks is ready. Well, here's 59, and here he's got Fisher down the sidelines, but this is pass interference. That should have been called on Grady Brooks. He hits the receiver before the ball is there. Wolverines get away with one. Yep, yep, got to agree with you there, Dan. You're right. Third down and four. High snap again by Morandi. Fires dropped by Fisher. That would have been a heck of a play. Dehani Jones took Jackson down. But he managed to fire a bullet just a little bit high as he was being hit. Brandy had to catch a bullet from Morandi. That's a great catch, and what that does is it distracts the quarterback just enough, and that's why this ball is a little bit overthrown. Sometimes he doesn't follow through very well, but that time he had a reason. Dahani Jones was right in his face. Joy Hill bowled. Honey. Nobody back. Michigan intent to let this one bounce. Goes into the end zone, knocked back. Knocked back, and the Irish fall on it on the six-yard line. It was going to be a touchback, Brent, because the guy that touched the ball was in the end zone. The official all over the call. You're exactly right. Tony Driver, they're signaling, was over the goal line when he tapped it. Watch this effort, though. Yep. If he would have uh, jumped maybe a half yard farther out. Yep, right foot down there in the end zone, so it will come out on the 20 yard line. Brady and the Wolverines leading 19 14. 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The flare to the A train. Nothing doing on that play. And the final seconds tick down, and we'll go to the fourth quarter with the Wolverines up by five. The storyline of the third quarter, Tom Brady returns to quarterback the Michigan offense. And this time, they don't settle for a field goal. It's a touchdown. An ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Lean in for the fourth quarter of regulation with Michigan leading Notre Dame. First year they played football here back in 1879. So with Dan Fouts and Jack Arood, I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along with us as we move past 6 o'clock Eastern time to the final quarter. Michigan Notre Dame games have come down to the final quarter. Here's Brady, stays in the game, off the play fake, but sacked at the 11 yard line by Lamont Blank, who's played extremely well for Coach Davey and the Irish. That's an outstanding play by Lamont Bryant. He beat the block of the, of the uh, running back in there and really uh, determined 
effort to pick up a second sack. Third down. 17 yards the Wolverines need. Complete. But short of the first down as the receiver, Sean Thompson, slips after the reception. And Michigan is forced to punt, perhaps because of that slip. No question. I think Thompson would have picked up the first down, or at least been in position to battle for it. But just a little over anxious, the sophomore who's replacing Tooman from uh, that great offensive line and tight end from last year. Low snap. Sergeant gets it off. He's punted very, very well. Gatherall fields it at the 25 for Notre Dame. Slap down. At the 29 by B.J. Askew, the freshman running back from Cincinnati with a neat play. Timeout. Notre Dame in the area where Jackson threw the ball. And if the officials didn't make the call, all those Wolverines were going to. Illegal forward pass intentionally grounding the football. Oops. Penalty is a spot foul, loss of down. Second down. Now, some folks think that they should change their own college like they did in the NFL, too, Dan. If you scramble out of the pocket, you can throw this baby away. You agree with that? Well, no, I, I like the way the college game is played. I don't think we need to change uh, any of the rules in college football because the quarterbacks in college, once they get out of the uh, pocket, can be more, much more dangerous. They're, all we have to do is look at number seven out here and see what he can do when he gets out of the pocket. Givens and Johnson. Wide outs for Notre Dame. Drop off the screen. Fisher, penalty flag. Comes flying into that pile. Notre Dame was a lot more disciplined last week. Only three penalties against Kansas. This will be the seventh one of the day against Notre Dame. The pass was behind the line of scrimmage, and therefore there is no foul. Third down. What the foul would have been if it wasn't behind the scrimmage, behind the line of scrimmage, would have been an offensive lineman downfield. That's heads up uh, teamwork by our officiating crew to straighten that one out. Third down and 16. Jackson over the middle, caught by the tight end for a first down, and again on third down, Jarius Jackson bails him out, this time to Jabari Holloway for 21 yards, and, and he's you know down. And Brent, you know the coaches upstairs see exactly what we're looking at here. Look at Tommy Hendricks. He's less than full speed here. In fact, he may be less than half speed. That's his man, the tight end. Patman came over, put the big hit on Holloway, but Hendricks has no ability with that bad left knee to make the coverage. So, Dan, with, uh, with Holloway down, now, in your opinion, because of that, are they better off with an inexperienced youngster back there who's There's fit physically, or would you stick with someone who understands things a little bit better and not 50 percent, maybe? Well, coaches are kind of like sharks. They see somebody bleeding out there, and they're going to go and attack. And right now, Tommy Hendricks is oozing blood. Time out. Big hit this time by Dwayne Patman from Patrick Henry High School in San Diego. That's a rip shot on Jabari Holloway. But Patman knows a little bit about the physical side of football. His high school teammate, some guy named Ricky Williams. Pretty good company. Pretty good high school football program there at Patrick Henry. You know, uh, Dan Jackson's hit a third and 15 and a third and 16, bailing the Irish out. First down for the Notre Dame 45. Jackson on the option. Again, a bad pitch and out of bounds. He just sort of flings the ball as he's going down. You know what, Brent? That's a forward pass. That should be an incomplete pass because he was behind it? the line of scrimmage when he pitched the ball. Was there a receiver there? 
<laughs> Did he intentionally ground it? If it's forward? Yeah, I think they called that an incomplete pass. But he is getting quite erratic with his pitches. This again is to Gibbons on the outside. But a, a bad pitch turns into a good play because they, they Same just, complete pass. They don't lose any yardage. Oh, he's livid. There was nobody over here. He said, who's he throwing it to? Well, Gibbons was near it. Five yards away. <laughs> Second down and ten for the hour. Jones has picked up. Fisher sprints outside the Hendricks this time. Looking just a little bit healthier on that play. And a reminder, we got a little prime time college football coming your way next Saturday. Ohio to that play. Third down and nine. Jackson is eight of 16 for 139 yards. Here's his 17th pass of the day. Got him. Beautiful grab by Hunter. For a Notre Dame first down. Boy, you put this fella, Jarius Jackson, in third down, and he's a lot better than he is in first or second, it seems. <laughs> but, you know, we talked about his young, inexperienced offensive line. They're doing a great job pass protecting for number seven. Again, we saw earlier Javen Hunter on a deep in route down the field on the third down. It takes a lot of time for that to develop. And that young offensive line's doing a great job. Jordan Black, 78, Jones, Miranda, Gandy, Teasdale, all thrown together. First down and 10. Using the shotgun, wall of protection all day, overthrew, intercepted, picked off by Hendricks. A very poorly thrown football over the head of the intended receiver. And Tommy Hendricks the interception. Jackson just got greedy on this one. It's a quick out to the right side of the screen. He doesn't like that. Now he's got the, a lot of time to throw. That ball sailed on him. Poor follow through that time by Jackson, and the ball got away. What a great story for him. Tommy Hendricks to come back after the injury. Doesn't look real good backpedaling here. But he really reacts well, sees the throw, and makes the catch. First down and 10. Fake to Walter Cross, who's in the game. Throw the screen to Shea, and Shea is nailed at the 35 by Denman. And you would think now that the Wolverines would turn their attention to the running game. And we asked their fine guard, Hutchinson, what's the importance of the running game to Michigan? Here's what he said. That's what we want to do this year. We want to get back on track. You know, we want to have a balanced offense, but we do want to run the ball well, and we want to be able to run the ball at will. So, you know, that's what we're going to concentrate on this year is to get it back up there. Is that a football face <laughs> or what, Steve uh, Hutchinson? That's an offensive guard's face. <laughs> uh, ready to go down there. Left guard. The A trains check back in. Movement. I think the nose man may have jumped across for the Irish. We'll see if he was pulled or not. Wisney was down there in the middle of that line. Get a heads up play by the senior quarterback Tom Brady using the hard count there getting the nose tackle to jump. Let's watch Fire how much snap. illegal contact by the defense. Yeah. Five yard penalty. The down remains second. Watch how high this ball is. And, and there's really nobody in his face. It looks like he's trying to take something off the throw. The receiver was open, O'Leary there, but the ball just sailed on him. Well, it's interesting to uh, talk about throwing the ball in that situation. First down for Michigan. And, uh, well, let's go to Dan Fouts inside the game. One of the technical aspects about Jarius Jackson's game that offensive coordinator Kevin Rogers would like to see improved is his follow through. There are times when Jackson will throw the ball. There was movement. Again, penalty flags down. And the A train just batters away. And if it's against the Irish for jumping in there again, they'll decline it. And 
There was no contact, so this play should stand. The difference between offsides and encroachment. Defense penalty is declined. First down. And another those check in with John Saunders on an update of New York. John. Ren, it's time for the win your way Burger King play of the day. Ronald Curry doesn't get the win in this game against Virginia. He's the point guard on the basketball team. And look at him. Chuck and jive and throw this one into Dante Finger. Two point conversion tied the game, but Virginia wins it with a field goal late. Brent. All right, John. Ronald Curry. Love watching him play hoops, too. Speaking of that, Mr. Hoops, Dick Vitale on the other side, suffering a little bit. Keen Notre Dame football fan. Here's the A train. Anthony pounds back to the 35 yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you today by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Sears and the Sears National Championship Football Trophy. And Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up, never let you down, make it a Bud Light. You get the feeling that Steve Hutchinson was right. They want to get back to running the ball. They want to get back to Michigan football. Here's your leaders today. Mr. Brady stood tall. Coach said they could decide it on the field, and if so, Brady's the starter. Here he comes again. Going for Walker in the end zone. Incomplete. Clifford Jefferson, the corner, with Walker. Tom Brady expected that one to be a touchdown. He threw it exactly where he wanted to, but in a couple of weeks, Walker makes this catch going away. But remember, this first game of the year, they don't quite have their legs under them. Look at the stumbling by the receiver. The right hand grab there, that could have been called as the fans here at the Big House see that play replayed on the big board here. We've had a couple of plays that could have been called interference. And uh, the crowd reacting to that replay on the twin scoreboards here either end of the big house so everybody 111,000 with a chance to see it incomplete and back over the middle and uh, Walker unable to hang on Lee Lafayette the corner that's a great call you know we talked about this chess match uh, going on between the different coordinators we'll get one to Greg Madison that time came with a safety blitz there Hutchinson or is that the center that's the center let me check that that's David Grant limping off. I looked down and saw that seven and thought it might be Hutch. And Hayden Epstein will attempt the long field goal. Brady will hold it. This is a 52 yarder. This man's got leg, wind, pulling left, off oh, the upright, no good. Slam the left upright. A little discussion with his holder that time, too, I think. But Michigan leads it. Timeout. Oh, look, look, look at that rig now, man. Now look at that rig. Let's go, Aaron! Come on, Jerry Ads! Come on, Jerry Ads! Let's go! <laughs> He's a classic, isn't he? He didn't know the camera was on it, folks. First down and 10, and uh, Jackson this time. No, none of that pitch stuff. Let's just keep it from five yards out to the 40-yard line. Renus, the nose man, making the stop. Who was that guy? Why you is know, he st I, stealing jewelry? I, I gotta uh, tell you something. I found him today <laughs> jogging in the hotel. Okay? Inside the hotel. Not around it. And he said, oh, Brent, I hate to say this, but my magazine's coming out. I, Michigan State's number one in my <laughs> preseason basketball. I won't tell Michigan fans that pick. I'll keep it quiet. Second down and five. Quick drop, slap together off. First down and then some. Inside the 45 yard line, Patman pounds him out of bounds. Jack a root. Brent, you know last year the option was a real problem for the Michigan Wolverines. Consider the fact that their first three games will be against the option. So what did the Michigan defense do? They went to this man, Van Pelt, Tad Van Pelt, who plays defense, and they taught him the option game. He became their option quarterback. They said the only problem was he certainly couldn't be as fast as Jarius Jackson. Yeah, or as powerful. 
when I watch Jackson, the strength of his game to me is his power. I haven't seen the slickness that Donovan McNabb had, especially on the uh, when he gets outside on that corners. First down and ten. Good pair of hands on Jarvis. Middle's open. Got him. Evans upended at the 28-yard line. But oh, were the Wolverines soft that time until Patman delivered the blow on Gibbons. Now I, and on the sideline was Tommy Hendricks. So they're obviously getting him back in because Patman is shaken up making the stop. And we talked about the strength of the secondary being Hendricks and Patman. We've seen Hendricks all over the field today. This is a real scary collision. Great pass protection again. There's nobody near the quarterback. He throws a good pass. Now watch this hit. How Gibbons hangs on to the ball. I don't know how he gets up. I don't know. And good thing for Dwayne Patman. He is up and coming off. Well now Hendricks will be there along with the freshman number two Cato June. Hendricks not 100 percent physically. And that you go back to that missed field goal we were talking about. That was huge. I would have put him on an eight. And they've missed two field goals here in the second half. That just gives life to the Irish. Is that option reverse? This time Nelson dances away after being surrounded, but coming up is Ian Gold, number 20, makes a sure tackle with authority. When he saw what was happening, he came and tackled the wide receiver. That was a heck of a run for uh, a couple of yard loss by Rakai Nelson. But you're right, Brent. Uh, Gold, who used to be a running back. He really came up and made a sure tackle and that's what Michigan needs to do right now. That play there backs the Irish up into a passing situation. Second down and 15. This Irish offensive line has been giving Jackson time but I think there was some movement. Oh a costly penalty right here late in the game. Well, they lost five yards on the reverse play, and now they're going to lose another five yards. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, five-yard penalty, but on remains second. Let me remind you that uh, the Goodyear Blump, of course, has been up above us, and we'd like to take this moment to invite you to consider helping the Red Cross relief effort for earthquake victims over there in Turkey. You can help the effort by calling the Red Cross at 1-800-HELP-NOW. 556 remaining in regulation. Second down and 19, Notre Dame. To the middle, Gibbons twists. But short of the first down by about three yards to Honey Jones, the linebacker, dropping off. Not too many of the record setting crowd have headed for the exits here. If you take a look, these seats are still pretty full, and why not? It's a five-point difference coming down to that five-minute mark here. Dwayne Patman returning. And the freshman June is out. So the veteran safety is on the field. Little confusion, though, in that backfield right now. Four wide outs high. Got Nelson battling for the first down. I'm not sure he got it. Well, he he was locked up with Todd Howard. Did they give it to him? Well, they got a great spot. I think it's still going to be short, but the official ran in, and uh, it's only going to be short by six inches or so, and that may tempt Bob Davey to go for it on fourth down. Would you go down for the first, or would you kick the field goal? I guess in this situation, you'd go for it, huh? I think so. Yeah, you got a good running quarterback. I mean, Jarius has been so powerful. Why wouldn't you just say go get it Jarius? Well either that or you've got some power too with the big fullbacks leading the tailbacks. They have a number of options here. The option play being one of them. Well, I don't like the option play here. I like a little power football friend. Here's Jackson. They are going to throw. Shades of Desmond Howard. They're walking for a touchdown. Makes the play call upstairs. Let's 
let's take a break with his timeout. Fourth and inches, and the Irish throw for the score. Timeout. Brent, the Irish called timeout because they want to go for two. Jackson went over, took the entire offense over there to get the instructions. Well, who knows what they're going to come up with here after that last fourth down call. Jackson sprints, dumps, got it. And those two are huge as he hits Bobby Brown for the two-point conversion with 4.08 to go. the blimp to take a look at the touchdown first thing you want to look at here's driver he's or Fisher rather he's wide open in the flat but now here's the tight end Jabari Holloway and if this doesn't look like Syracuse offense from last year and Donovan McNabb throwing back to a wide open receiver Kevin Rogers offense is here to stay at South Bend and they've got to love it it was then an opportunity to put it on the three. And Jarius dumped it to the wide open ground. That means a field goal can tie it. And the key play here, watch Brown just kind of find his way between linebackers and defensive backs. The threat of the run by Jackson opens up Brown for the two. 1991, I was down here and it was Michigan had the ball. Notre Dame has been smarting about this play for an entire decade. Fourth and inches. And Elvis Gerback went for it. And Tesman Howard made the catch. And now, 1999. Notre Dame comes back, and on fourth and inches, they come up with their own brand of lightning. 4.08 to go, and another classic between Michigan and Notre Dame. The underdog Irish lead it, 22-19. There will be a celebration penalty marked off. After the two-point conversion, Bobby Brown drew attention to himself. That's why he got the penalty from the officials. Now, this is a 15-yard penalty. That means Michigan is going to have wonderful field position after this return. That's a huge penalty. Look who's back to return the kickoff, the A-train. And he wants this one to be an express. Number 32. three yard line right up the gut and to the 43 let's go to Jack Aru Jack Brent you're looking at the $30,000 Sears National Championship trophy it was started in 1993 you would think that Michigan would have one of these in 1997 they won the national championship oh I'm wrong it was a co-championship Nebraska got the trophy Notre Dame they don't have one in their trophy case either this is the beginning of the battle for both these teams to get one of these to put on campus. Yep, and these games are huge. The BCS ratings want to come out in October. These games will mean a lot. Don't have to ask the folks of Ohio State, Arizona, how painful an early season loss can be. Uh, first down and 10 now for Brady and the Wolverines. Dropped. Marcus Knight. And it'll be second and ten. The clock inside of four minutes. Michigan with all three of their timeouts left. Trailing by three points. You look down on the largest crowd to ever see a college football game here today in Ann Arbor. And our thanks to the pilots and crew of the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes for those great shots today. Yeah, especially on the touchdown. Huh? That was great. And a wonderful second down and ten. Brady. What an open man to tight end Sean Thompson and Thompson. First down Michigan and a penalty flag. Probably a late hit out of bounds over there around the Irish bench at the 43. Terrell and Gibbons with a few words for each other. That's two unbelievably bad 
penalties for Notre Dame in just a couple of minutes. The celebration penalty, and now after the play, the hit along the sidelines right in front of Bob Davey by Ron Israel, a real cheap shot and a very expensive cheap shot at that because now Michigan is well within range for Hayden Epstein. By the way, that was a great job of Brady hanging in the pocket. The Irish were coming with a corner blitz by Devron Harper. And Brady took a shot and got the ball off. 348. First and ten for Brady and Wolverines. A train makes the most of it. Denman hanging on. Time permits, of course. Stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report. We'll have scores and highlights from across the country. But hang on, who knows? We could be headed to overtime in this baby. Good for 323 to go. But Fred, that's not what Michigan's thinking right now. They're thinking touchdown. They have the luxury of knowing they're already in field goal range, so they can take some shots at the end zone. A train gets some time off, and Walter Cross checks in. Brady to throw. Terrell got it. Five yard line. First and goal, Michigan. Now, Mike DeBoer, the offensive coordinator for Michigan, knew he had a mismatch with this man throwing to his wide receivers. David Terrell's had an outstanding afternoon. This is a clutch catch that he secures and goes down on the ground to set his team up inside the 10 yard line. A lot of guys would try to run that one in, but he knew that the safety, D. Cooper, was coming with a big hit. Big play for Michigan. Eight catches for 115 yards for Terrell, who is split out to the right. Knight is in the slot right. The A train back. Here he comes. Hounds up toward the one yard line. Watch Aaron Shea lead the way here, Dan. 6'5", 251 pounds, a former tight end. He looks like a pulling guard here. Finds the linebacker, drills him right in the numbers. That's Terry O'Harrison, and the A-train gets down almost to the one. Second down and goal. Bill Seymour gives him an extra tight end. The wideouts come out. And now Michigan can take some time off the clock. Jay and Evan Coleman. And the A-train gets the call. Got it! Hold on, was he down? Was his knee down? The Irish are there. The official's gonna say that Devin Harper got him down before he went in the end zone, his knee touched. And Notre Dame calls timeout quickly. What a great tackle by Devin Harper, number 10. He went low on the A-train. Check it out. The fans don't like it. But that left knee just seemed to brush the grass. Are you sure? Well, I hope to be after I see this picture. Watch the left knee. Oh, man. You know, this grass is an inch and a half long. Maybe it's grown a little in the last couple of minutes. Hmm. Tough call. Time out. Eagle one eight is a train. <laughs> On the toss, runs wide, fouls into the end zone for the touchdown. from one yard out. And Del Verne hammers in the extra point. The Irish 
are left with a minute 38. They trail it by four. Field goal won't help Davey. Nothing's ever easy when it's Notre Dame and Michigan. I want to thank some folks. It's been a great coverage today. The coordinating producer of ABC's college football, producer of the game, Bob Goodrich, directed by Drew Essenhoff, the TD, Doug Schmidt, associate producer, Mitch Green, associate director, Brian Gordon, production manager, Scott Silverman, the technical operations manager, Jim Lakata, the assistant, Drew Kaliski, and the rook, Larry Tiscornia, our stats man, George Hill, spotter, Brian Mobleson, down in the computer room, Anthony Holman, college football today, produced by Charles Coplin, directed by Calvin Haywood. Great job as we have a full Saturday on ABC. 138 to go now. First down for the Irish. Shotgun. Jackson deep overthrows Nelson. And let's remind you now that strange that we have no NFL this weekend, Labor Day weekend, but we certainly do have next weekend. Let's get ready. So, oh, it's so difficult, Jimmy. 133 to go. 26-22. Michigan leading it. Jackson. Got time, no more. Down at the 20, it was James Hall. Jackson trying to get the clock to stop here, but he can only get so much protection from his offensive line. Just a three-man rush. That means he's looking at eight defensive backs and linebackers in the secondary. And there's not one white shirt that's not covered by a maize and blue uniform. Let's take a look at our matchup for it, Dan. How we how we make out here, partner? Well, I, you know, I think the play of Tom Brady has made this hold up for me, Brent. Uh, on defense, Michigan has been able to get great effort from their secondary, and I think it's really going to show off there. The special teams, uh, you got to go with Michigan, and you got to look at their kicker, Jeff Delvern, with four field goals today. And as far as the intangibles, I'll let you handle that one, pal. Well, you know, I still like the fact the Irish had that game, and I think that Kevin Rogers knew a lot more about Jarius Jackson, and I think it paid a dividend with some of the play call they here today. But clearly, I agree with you about Michigan having the advantage in those three other areas. And if you go back, when Notre Dame got the lead, they got the celebration penalty on Bobby Brown in the end zone. So that meant that they kicked off from the 20-yard line, that Michigan got a good return. And then on the first play, another penalty against Notre Dame gave Michigan the opportunity not to have to settle for the uh, field goal, but to go on in and get the touchdown. Third down and 10. The Irish have spent their timeouts. Deep middle, Nelson's got it. Clock stops, first down. Notre Dame not out of bullets yet. And again, you go back to who they're attacking in the secondary. Tommy Hendricks is playing on a bad leg. He's supposed to be the deepest man on the field. Nelson gets inside of Wheatley, but there is Hendricks. He should have been able to come up with that play. A 36-yard completion. Now 44 yards away. Remember, field goal won't help. No timeouts. To the middle. Need a first down. Hunter didn't get it. Clock continues to run. That was Dahani Jones making the stop for Michigan. Got to move quickly. The Irish cannot waste a second. Got the first down. Once he goes down, clock stops. At the 21-yard line. 41 seconds. Jackson driving the Irish. And he's going with his best receiver, Rakai Nelson, who's emerging as a big playmaker. Gibbons and Nelson, the wideouts. In trouble, throws it out of bounds, second down. Good pressure by James Hall and uh, good recognition in the secondary by Michigan. They saw that that was going to be a screen pass. They covered it well, and Jackson did the smart thing throwing it away. He's in range now to put the ball in the end zone. Remember, Bobby Brown goes 6-2. Nelson is about 5-11, so they can get up and get some of these 
jump balls, if you will. Here they come with Brown, Gibbons, and Nelson. Fisher, the running back, to block. In trouble. And down at the 31-yard line. No timeouts. The clock ticking away. Jones with a huge play defensively. Great call in the secondary. They brought the weak safety, Dwayne Patman. He and Jones got in there on the quarterback for the big sack. Now 31 yards away. Jackson. Jackson. Middle. Got Nelson, but short of the first down. Clock runs. He's got it down. Can he get it down? Not enough time. Michigan wins it. For one more timeout, the Fighting Irish are saying right here. The key play was the safety blitz by Dwayne Patman that took the Irish because they had no timeouts out of the ball game. It's a game of inches. Nelson with the reception came up about six inches short of a first down that might have stopped the clock. Here's the sack. Michigan team, which suffered an opening game loss in South Bend last year and then could not recover for game two when Syracuse came in here and gave them a whipping. But now the Michigan Wolverines are off on the right foot. The Irish go to one and one and a big game. You know, right, let me interrupt you for a second. We want to get Lloyd Carr before he goes in to celebrate. Congratulations. Thank you, Jack. It was a great football game, and I, my hat's off to Notre Dame. Both teams played their hearts out, and uh, that's about as exciting as it'll ever get. How typical is this of a Notre Dame-Michigan contest? Well, it's uh, typical of a lot of those games. Right down to the wire, they never quit, and uh, when you're on the field, they get the ball down there with a few seconds and a chance to win. I don't think, I think it says everything about what college football is all about. Now, you went into the game a little bit determined as I want to see Brady, I want to see Henson. You said, I want to see what happens in the game. What about now? Or do we have a quarterback controversy We've got anymore? Two great quarterbacks, two great ones. He's still mum on it, guys. Well, I don't think we are because our Chevrolet players of the game will honor the young man Tom Brady who came back and sparked that victory in the second half leading the Wolverines to the win today. Curious Jackson standing tall for Notre Dame and a one thousand dollar contribution to each university general scholarship fund and don't forget now Chevrolet also donates one thousand dollars to a couple of high schools for Jackson and Brady. Michigan wins its opener twenty six twenty two. The blimp provided by Goodyear. And stay tuned for the thrifty Car Rental Scammer.